Welcome to Believe in 76ers with your host, former 76ers point guard Eric Snow and two Sixers fanatics in Marcus and Tasia Dash. Believe in 76ers is presented by BetOnline.ag. BetOnline.ag is your number one source for all your basketball info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports for this year's pro basketball playoffs. BetOnline is always your sports information headquarters this season as we have you covered for all your sports wagering needs. Basketball, MLB, NHL, right to UFC, and boxing. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games you can play right from your home. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Be sure to use our promo code, that's BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, where the game starts. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Believe in 76ers Podcast. I'm Marcus Dash here with legendary 76ers point guard Eric Snow and my brother Tasia Dash. We're one more one win away from uh, getting to an early uh, early finals here. I mean, I, this this finals might be over by like a week before the, the draft, based on the way this uh, the conference finals went. It's kind of crazy, it up. actually. Yeah, I, but I, I don't believe I believe they still start at the same time, no matter when it ends. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I thought it was going to start early just because they, they, they were still too They straight. may have an earlier day, but I haven't seen anything. I mean, maybe Tasia can look that up. <laughs> Done. Um, uh, June 1st. No matter what, yeah. It's June wow. 1st. Yeah. Huh, so more, more rest time, I guess. Well, those dates are already, those days are already set. Those the locations, you know. That's Everything, true. Yeah. Everybody has yeah. to have the location set for those days. I believe the whole seven days are already set. Which days they play? Damn. Yeah, man. If if if, if it goes Miami, if Miami closes them out, that's over a week of rest. Over a week. Yes. Wow. Wow. Were you shocked at the way uh, Denver uh, kind of ran through? I mean, it was, they were close. All, all of them were pretty much close games uh, in the, the four games. But were you kind of shocked the way Denver kind of handled LA, Eric? No, I mean, I, you know, you know my, obviously my one of my boys there is a huge LeBron fan, which makes him a huge Laker fan. And I told him I, I felt if they didn't win the, one of the first two games that I didn't think they could win the series. Now, I didn't think they would not win a game. I just felt that they couldn't win the series if they played from behind because they hadn't done that in the previous series. Um, they had always won game one. Um, so... When game three kind of went the other way, I, I was like, yeah, they're going to lose. But I think that game four, I thought it was going good. I thought the Lakers could win it. That's until third I quarter, them, man. Until I seen them play LeBron the whole first half. When he played the whole first half, I, I gave him the benefit of the doubt in the second half. I said, there's no way they can win game five. Because he won't have any legs mm. um, by the end, by the second half, and I was a game off. <laughs> he didn't have any legs in the second half of Game Four. Um, you could just see it; like it was just he was like a totally different person. He scored thirty-one and then nine. That's not talent. It's not ability. That's just you know the stamina. Yeah, yes, yeah. just too much. Um, and that was probably another game where they probably needed to. Set, set the table for him in the end. And to a certain extent, they did. Um, but you can just tell by the, the attempts and the shots that he got late in the game. Um, the left was off. Um, didn't really get to his dominant hand. Even though he likes to go left, he's a left-handed guy. He does like to go left, but usually to shoot a jump shot. Um, usually when he's, you know, his stronger drives and more – Elevating is to the to the right um, and left. Like I said, is usually for his jump shot, step back, or clean finish, um, or fadeaway, whatever, which, whichever move he decides to go with. But I was kind of, you well, know, just I mean, you, I could just tell by his shot attempts in the end that he was just the legs weren't there. Mm-hmm. Plus, he probably. Benefited from some nice positive regression too with those three point shots in the first half. They were falling 
He was yeah, I mean, him. but he was but he was also in the paint. He was also in the paint. But that's but we've talked about that before with Joel when I was like, people won't do it because it's tiring, it's hard. And yeah. You got to have a great deal of stamina to be able to do that all game long. Yeah. And for LeBron, yes, he made some threes, but he was really hurting them by attacking the basket and posting up and um, because he put himself in position to, um, you know, attack, attack, score, pass, you know, get to the free throw line, put people in foul trouble, take away, take take advantage of mismatches and all of that stuff. And, and with him, starting to be more on the perimeter. You can just tell, not necessarily by him taking more jump shots, but it was really the standing when he was off the ball. So you you can hear Mark and, and Jeff saying all the time that you have to get him involved. And I think one yeah. other time Mark was like, oh, like, like, like LeBron got to get involved too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That, you, that's what you can tell, like the, the standing. Because I know from a point guard, I still – I remember – Coach Brown showed a film session of to me about all the times that I stood when I didn't have the ball, um, and how I was just oh, wait on oh, a film session dedicated to this. Oh yeah, it was a film session dedicated to how <laughs> much I st- just stood stood around. Um, but it wasn't the whole team; it was just me. It was me, and actually, you know, it comes from Coach Brown, but he has Coach Kuster, John Kuster, do the film session. Okay, I know who it comes from. Yeah. Um, and oh, yeah, they had all these clips of when I passed the ball and just stood versus what I was supposed to do, hit and go through or go to the weak side. Yeah. Whole film session <laughs> of just those clips. Not even they didn't even have like we weren't even like on the um, um, what happened in the action. It was just like, look at you. Look at you. <laughs> look what you did here. <laughs> Next clip. Look what you did right here. Yeah. So I get it. And, and Russ, he must have been so fed up with you, Eric, to be like, you know what? Tonight you make you make a uh, whole uh dedication. Yeah, I was resting though. That's the thing about it. Like, yeah, I was tired. Resting. <laughs> I was going. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I uh there's been a lot of um first off, I, I wanted to say this that I think I've been hearing on TV and stuff and online that's one of the most impressive sweeps of all time. Like, the, not not Nuggets, the Lakers, they look the most impressive you could look in a sweep of, like, all time. They're one of the most impressive sweep teams of all time, which I think is ridiculous. That they, were, they played well and they still got swept? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think people are just trying to find positives for, you know, LeBron losing and Lakers losing. Um, like, it's – it's. I just found that to be really, really comical. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are getting on AD for not showing up offensively. Um, I was watching, uh, I think, Get Up uh, earlier, and Zach Lowe was defending his defense, being like, you know, he's been one of the most dominant defensive players in the playoffs, all all playoffs. So, yeah, he's not he's just he's not a thirty five point game guy. He's just, that's not who he is, right? Like, if you want to criticize him for that, sure, but you know, he is what he is, right? Um, I, mean, I, I don't really, I don't really know how to judge it. All I'm saying is, um, Jokic has a lot of volume. He gets the ball a lot. Mm-hmm. He shoots a lot. Um, we're gonna really make that comparison. Then give him the same kind of volume. Yeah. Then we'll see. But you just can't say a guy coming and he getting all these numbers. He getting all those numbers for a reason. I don't yeah. see Anthony Davis touching the ball as much as much as he did. I see LeBron James touching the ball that much. That's why he had the numbers he had. Yep. Yeah. But you can't have LeBron James going for 49 and 9, and then you expect Anthony Davis to do the same thing. Yeah. With minimal yeah. touches. Well, he, it's funny, he actually he kind of brought it up. He was like, you know, he goes, the three best big men are Jokic and Bede and Davis. Um, he's like Davis so is isn't a honest big man. I guess he, I guess he didn't call, consider him a pure center in that in that regard, um, but he was like, you just don't. Davis just doesn't have those guys make up. You don't just dump the ball to him and like let him go. He's never been that guy. He's never been a guy who just like you give him give him the ball and like let him work let, and let him get his thirty five. Um, but I don't know. 
yeah, I, it's it's interesting to see all this unfold. I mean, he, now. he was he was sort of like that in New Orleans. He just couldn't really stay healthy, but he was more of a give him the ball and go score, not give him the ball and score and have fourteen assists and that's that's the yeah yeah that's not, yeah he's not that guy. He mm-hmm. can score if he's getting a, a amount of volume, mm-hmm. but you're just not going to get a guy that's going to go get you triple doubles all the time. You're just not going to do that. It's been decreasing, though. I think LeBron, when he signed up for this, I think he wanted a kind of an an alpha to score next to him, though. Because I think LeBron knew, was, look, look, I'm getting older, man. You need to be you need to be scoring like 30 points a game with yeah, me. I he, cannot. He's he's a he's not a go get guy like Kyrie was. He's a you got to mm-hmm. give me plays. Yep. And I go get. You don't give me plays. I'm gonna stand in, standing like everybody else. Mm-hmm. You give me plays, I'll score. That was actually one of the trade proposals I saw. It was uh, Kyrie for AD. It's a, you know, a joke account, but there's so much stuff going on with the Lakers. I don't know what to think. Is LeBron's gonna retire? Kyrie's coming. Reeves is leaving. He's not leaving. He's doing this. They're gonna get this guy and that guy. Like, yeah, their, their, their names attached to like pretty much everyone. Everything. Like, Trey Trey Young was also another one I saw. AD for Trey Young. No. 80 for yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, stack, <laughs> stack 80 and John Collins and Capella. Uh, yeah, there, there you go. That's a winning, winning formula. I mean, that's you know, that's one that's the thing I always so the Kyrie with, one's not crazy especially though, especially with the Lakers. It's like in Lakers, you know, media or fans or whatever y'all want to call them, it's always hilarious to me that they criticize all the guys outside of LeBron. Like say they can't play and they this and that and he, but then you think that you're gonna go trade them for guys as the best players in the league. <laughs> yep. <laughs> last, last year it was THT. <laughs> THT for everybody. THT <laughs> for Kyrie. THT for James Harden. Why not? He's great. He had a triple double a month ago. It was like, dude, THT's on the second coming, guys. Chill out. That's, yeah, that's what they do. That's the funny part. <laughs> No, nah, it's hilarious. But the Kyrie for AD one, that's not – if they want to keep their depth pieces, that's not crazy. They can't have it all. You can't have these guys and keep all your depth pieces. So it's just not – Yeah, I mean, you can you can do that, but um, – As we're finding out, tough big part, A big reason why you won against Memphis and Golden State was, was Anthony Davis. Yes. And his dominance. In, in now, the big part of you losing – to Denver is because the best big guy on the court was on Denver. Mm-hmm. And Denver also had, you know, the, let's not forget, Denver also had a guy that was averaging 32 whatever points a game. Yeah. yeah. That was that wasn't named Jokic. Yeah. yeah. The best score in that series was their yes. second best player. Yes. yes. So there you go. Like when you're their third best score, their third best player was probably the Second or third highest score. Porter Porter was killing people, man. Just yeah. He had 15 plus. You had um KCP played well. Gordon um, looked good last night. Gordon had 22. Um Gordon was trying to make LeBron work for it as much as he could. They dared him to shoot. Um Gordon did a great job on LeBron. That's why LeBron was seeking pick and rolls and switches, which he's supposed to do, but that's why. Um, yeah. You know, you know a guy's giving you a harder time, you seek. That's what it's all about: advantages, seeking an e- easier advantage. Mm-hmm. Um, so, didn't really play seven people last night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, D'Lo barely got any playing time last night, and I don't think Vanderbilt touched the floor last night. Mm-hmm. T- Tage's boy Vanderbilt. You think uh, you, you want to make a play at him this off season, Tage? I mean, no better or worse than McDaniel's, <laughs> right? <laughs> Look, man, what do the Daniels I mean, do for us in the playoffs? It's, it's, um, when things go, you, you, you play with LeBron in particular. Um, when things go south, you better be able to make a shot if you're one yeah. of those other guys. Mm-hmm. Um, the way he plays and style, you're going to get wide open shots. So if they feel like they're playing off of you and you're not getting those shots, you, you can't play with them. Mm-hmm. He's different than other some other stars because it's it's a lot of standing when you're with him. Um, so, yeah. Um, it, uh, 
Coach Malone, he was uh, an assistant when you were at Cleveland, right, Eric? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, uh, they didn't talk about that at all last uh, – I think this whole series, they didn't really make the connection between LeBron and Malone uh, working with each other in Cleveland. His, and his dad um, was assistant when I first got there. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Hmm. Then when they let Paul go, he was a head coach for like the rest of the year. Oh, wow. My first year there. Really? Huh. Look at that. Um, well, that's, that's cool, the uh, the connection there. Um, but before we get to the uh, the topics tonight, I, I saw some uh, new reports uh, that I wanted to just quickly ask you guys um, about the head coaching candidates. So the Sixers are kind of undergoing the, the, the head coach search. Uh, so the only report uh, by a verified NBA source, uh, Woj, was that we are interviewing um, – Nick Nurse, former Raptors uh, coach, uh, was the G League coach of the Houston Rockets uh, affiliate uh, when uh, Maury was there. Um, mm-hmm. So there is that connection already there. Also, big analytics guy. So another Maury uh, connection right there. Uh, and then a report that I saw yesterday from one of the Philadelphia Barstool accounts was that Frank Vogel um, was uh, flying to Philadelphia for uh, an assumed interview. Uh, with the Sixers. So that's pretty much the only two reports of us interviewing guys so far. Um, what do you guys make of the two candidates that are uh, being reported uh, that we've uh, are, are interviewing between Vogel and nurse? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, did you, do you have a preference on either one or no? I mean, my gut tells me is Nick nurse. Me too. Um, because of a previous relationship and you know style of interest from you know, he and Maury, that's just what my gut tells me. I don't, I don't particularly know or feel otherwise, like how it's, how it can be different, how it can be effective. Um, and I think mainly a part of that is like because. I don't really know how the team gonna look. I don't know what you know. So it's hard to really get excited about a particular candidate. And we don't know. We don't know. What, we don't know what we're gonna have yet. We don't know how that's gonna look yet. So I think free agency is gonna be huge and and determining the enthusiasm and excitement in a certain direction. Um, Unless Nurse is our big acquisition. In the office. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they've. I mean, we got rid of a coach, and and I thought it was more on the players than the coach. So, I'm not going to go into now and thinking another coach is going to come in and get me more enthused. Yeah. And so we'll see. Like I said, my gut says Nick Nurse. I don't, you know, outside of a relationship. Um, I know Frank too, but. Oh, I mean, so I don't, we're yeah. just a different voice. Like, what is it? A different voice is going to come in, and all of a sudden it's just going to be better? Yeah. I mean, I would expect Harden to be a big topic of conversation when they interview anybody. Um, like, what's your guys' plan here? You're going to hire me. I, I need to know if he's going to be here or not. That's kind of important for me. Well, taking I, mean, I, 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 I right. wouldn't necessarily think that it, they have to, because I don't think they can make a commitment that he's going to be back because it's his choice. So they can't necessarily say he's going to be, be here. I, I think it's, the yeah. conversation has to be more of if he's here, what's your preference and how do you use him and how do we play? Yes. If he's not there, you have a scenario of we replace him with wing players and let Maxi handle the point, or do we go get another point and let Maxi continue to play the wing? So those, to me, that's the kind of conversation you you have because you can't have it saying I know he's going to be there because it's it's not their choice. Yeah. They can make an effort. They can Sixers can offer him the most money that he can get, and he can still not stay. Yeah. Yeah, I read a few uh, uh, breakdowns of, of of just Nurse and how he would fit, but he um, apparently his his defense he's known for his defense. It, it, it's very very taxing on his players. They they predicate on crashing big in the paint and then 
getting back for three point shooters. So it, it's a lot. It's like, they say it's like wind sprints for for defense. So um, whoever wrote that article said that would be an interesting fit if Harden does get retained. So I don't know how much Harden's going to want to be doing wind sprints back from the the paint to the three point line all game. So yeah, interesting. It would be the worst thing, you know, for for Embiid wise for the the, the stamina I mean, that's, aspect. That's, that's why Toronto also like to have all similar sized guys. Yep, a lot of very long wing. Yeah. You can do that when you have yeah. that type of style. If you don't have that, then you can't do that. They also said too, though, if you go to a different team with that without that kind of makeup, you'll have to adjust. Yeah. Yeah, they also said too that um, he hasn't had a guy to really protect the paint since Gasol left. So now with Embiid being there, maybe that makes it a little easier, and you don't have to have everyone crash and, and, and collapse all the time just because you have a guy who can actually defend the paint by himself. Um, like he didn't really have that the last couple of years since Gasol. So Got it. that would be nice. So for right now, we're uh, kind of uh, we're not we're not celebrating a, a potential Knicks nurse hire. We're just kind of like meh. <laughs> we're kind of mad with it. Is that is that? No, I, 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 I'd be cool with nurse. Yeah, I'm a, I'm fine with him. I'm just saying I, it's hard for me to really be so enthused without knowing the direction of the the team. Mm. I mean, you you're talking about your second best player maybe not being there, and if he's not. How are we going to make up for that? Mm. The the reports are that Milwaukee and Phoenix are very interested in Nick Nurse. They're, they're, so it seems like it's a three way race for Nurse. That's what it seems like. All with the, with Woj reporting yesterday. If Nurse were to pick the Sixers over the other two teams, does that give you does that give you any kind of reason for a promise that we might bring back Harden? Or I mean, what, what does that say to you if he ends up picking us over the other two options? Which you can you can make the argument that Milwaukee and Phoenix are in a better spot than the Sixers are. Mm-hmm. It tells me two two things. One, he had the better deal there. <laughs> and then two, he has a previous relationship. That's what it tells me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because you can't look at that situation and say, um, oh, the Sixers is better. Like I think they all have their pros and cons. Yeah. Um, you know, Milwaukee has Giannis and Drew Holiday, but they still got Middleton and I think Lopez are free agents or can be free agents. Yep. So that team can look different. You don't really know how it's going to look. Phoenix, you know, obviously you got the Aiden situation, you got Chris Paul situation. They have to get some depth. That's you don't know how that's going to look. With us, you have the James situation. Mm-hmm. You don't really know how it's going to look. I mean, yeah, they, all, three they all come with their little little. Yeah, baggage. three teams at the end of the day that had good regular seasons. Didn't do well postseason. All comes with stuff and all good options. Um, So I think it's going to come down to best deal, um, best flexibility, um, you know, best, you know, you have a little say, best, who can, you know, flexibility with staff and all that other stuff. I mean, I think what he, if he, if he's involved in all these different places, he'll have a little leverage to for his agent to work some deals out. Uh, sometimes I think it may come down to that. You know, team giving him five years instead of four. So that so that's what tells me that the Sixers, you know, tells me gave him the better deal in the previous relationship is what I would point at more so mm-hmm. than him thinking the Sixers is the best option. So. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, uh, so um, we're gonna get into uh, some some stuff here. Uh, so uh, obviously, with the playoffs, uh, the Eastern Conference Finals almost done. Um, we kind of talked about going to the playoffs, how we how we lost. Um, you know, if we got into the Eastern Conference Finals, how would that have looked? I mean, would would we still have had a Doc uh, Doc Rivers firing and all that stuff? So I wanted to ask you guys. Um, so, would you guys? This is something that's been going around on the Sixers Twitter. Would you guys have rather lost the way we did, losing in seven games as close as it was, or Go to the Eastern Conference Finals and get our asses handed to us to let Wade Boston's get their butts handed to them uh, by Miami. 
That's a tough yeah. one. I, I, I would rather go to the conference finals. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and the re the only way I would say lose game seven is if we were to won game six at home. Um, but to me, that's it's not the same situation just saying lose game at game seven. Because most teams that lose game seven win that home game to force a game set. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would say go to conference finals, especially for our team that hadn't, hadn't got past, gotten past the second round um, for 20 years. So. Uh, I, I do do you, go ahead. I was, I was going to ask. So. I know we said in, um, before the season that if we got to the Eastern Conference Finals, Doc probably would have been safe. Let's say, you know, we got to the Eastern Conference Finals. No, we said it depends on how it ended. How it ended. Okay, so <laughs> if, if we got to the Eastern Conference Finals and we were facing a, a, a 4-0 sweep tonight, do you think Doc would have been gone? Do you think the same fate would have happened? There was a chance, just like I think there's a chance that Boston's coach is going to go. Yeah. I think there's a chance. If, if, you, if teams don't look competitive, they look disinterested, that points directly at the coach, fair or not. That's, that's yeah. That's, that's who you're gonna point at. I think it would have been. I, I think it would have been the same because we lost. Boston right now looks like us in Game Six and Seven. It's pretty close. Best yeah. players aren't showing up. They look flat. They look disinterested. Yeah. It's the same thing. I mean, it, they just they just never looked good in this series. Whereas we at times looked good. And then looked like complete crap. Or was it that Boston had games, good games against us, and then they had games against us like they look now? And they did. They looked yeah, pretty I mean, bad sometimes. Look, I mean, if Boston, if Tatum scores 51 points, or they would beat Miami. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at their percentages too, all their three point percentages are like yeah. half this series that they were against us. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Like they will win that series. <laughs> Crazy, you know, man. They, they 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 shot themselves out of the gym. They they they, they yeah. hit all their shots and now they can't make anything. Yeah. It's 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 crazy. I've seen those don't let us win one comments from some of the Boston players. And they're probably like if we get hot, we're gonna stay hot for a while because we've been cold for three straight yeah. games. Yeah. I mean someone asked me um out of the two series that were 3-0, which team would I pick to come back and win? I'd say Boston. And I picked, and I picked Boston. And they were yeah. like, you wouldn't pick LeBron? I'm like, no. I just I, – yeah, yeah, I trust LeBron to do it. I just don't think the Lakers – I just don't think the Lakers could win two games in Denver. I just, Denver's I, the better team. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. But I, the, the reason why I say that is because they – I felt Boston going back, winning game four, then going back home. If they win game four, they only have to win one more road game. And then they're in the same Lakers, position they were against Lakers us. The other way around. They won yeah. going forward. They had to win two road games. Um, and I just felt that 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 was the – that was you can, that, that's what you can do. But, yeah, I just – it's just not going well. I mean, they don't look good. It was it's it's a lot of things that I think people have said during the season. You can tell, like with Boston right now, it's almost looks somewhat like us. It's like now all of a sudden we let Doc go and you start hearing all of this stuff. Um Boston sounds like that same ticking bomb. It's like as soon as this happens, you're gonna hear all of this stuff. Yes. Yeah. It's already starting to get yes. released, actually. But yeah, no, it, it, it's it's funny how that works. They upset about the way Udoka was let go and they didn't think that was fair. They never. Oh, no, I, I mean, we had that conversation. A lot of people felt just the suspension was enough. True, but I wouldn't say they didn't recover. They were they played amazing this year. They did, yeah. they did just fine without I mean, but, him. But, but, but they're going to be judged on the postseason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and he has made blunders. He's made obvious blunders that everyone can see on national television. And, and then he says it. Yes. Yeah. And he says he's like, lost the locker room. Like, that's Oof. that's like a no-no for a coach. Oh, man. For it to happen, it's even like, 
how could you even say it? Mm-hmm. I know. Um, but, you know, yeah. So Nick Nurse may be waiting for another position the way everybody Yeah, talking. you better. You better oof. I'll tell you what. That actually looks more like a Nick Nurse. They're closer to like a Toronto than we are. You have a good Style defensive play. big man, and you have a bunch of really long wings who can run and who can get Style out there. Play. They got Gallinari coming back next year. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, yeah. I firmly believe that people are waiting to see what they do. So yeah. if they'll make a decision, I think it'd be really quick mm-hmm. to jump in on some of these other guys, which which is slow, I think will slow our process down. Yeah. yeah and more more he did say in his press conference they're not they're not going to rush it. They're not going to rush the, the coach search. So which yeah, is some to a certain extent I don't think it's their choice either cuz I think um for more for you to fire Doc what's your choices? Mm-hmm. That's what people yeah. that's the part that people don't understand like yeah you can get, we can get rid of a guy. What are you going to get? Yeah. That's why I never like talking about firing a coach until you have a plan. Yeah. 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 It's tough. I mean, it's even – it's weird. I was talking to Marcus about this, I think, yesterday, the day before. Boston's so – they're very similar to us. They're just a level higher than us. Like, they can't get over the championship hump. We can't get into the conference they just finals. Made it further. Yeah, yeah. But they can't complete. They can't complete the deal. They're just further along in the deal. We're, so we're, we're yeah. two steps behind. Yeah. So they need a guy who can get them past that, like that championship bump. I mean, that's, they have that guy. I know. It worked yeah. out the way it worked out. He had him, and he had him buying in, and he wasn't really confrontational. But he, but you see him get into guys. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. There, there are rumors um, surfacing that Doc could be a potential replacement in Boston, which is kind of. I can kind see of, that. And that, that's a guy who did complete the deal in Boston one time, but I can did. see that, especially with you know the the, the rumors is coming out of Marcus World and all that stuff with with the Sixers, with Doc, you know, being hard on guys like James. Yeah. yeah. They yeah, could, maybe they need that there. Maybe maybe he's only lucky in Boston. I mean, he he, do, he does get crapped on because people say he should have won more than just one in Boston, but he, he won one. He should have more, won more than one in Boston. Yeah, that, well, that's what a lot of people say that jo- Doc was uh is. I mean, his record should be better than it is. You know, he should have more rings than that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's that's what that's what's out there in the ether. Look who he lost to after they won. Yeah. The, they won the first year. Look yeah. and see who they lost to. That was the the pal Lamar Odom and I'm just Joey. saying when they lost the next year they, they won it then they lost to um Orlando who lost to the finals mm. right yep mm-hmm. and then they lost to the Lakers in Game Seven in the finals mm-hmm. then they lost to the Heat the juggernauts now yeah they had the Heat down they had a chance to finish them off at home. In game six, and LeBron went crazy, right? Mm-hmm. And they came home and won. I mean, came home, went to Miami and won, and won game seven. Right? Yep. Um, and Miami also didn't win it that year. That's the, the, the yep. Dirk map, maps. Yep. So I'm just yeah. saying, they didn't win it that year either. Um. To answer your original question, I'd usually say I would rather just lose in the second round than get swept in the third. But in this case, I think I might choose – I think I'm choosing the Eastern Conference Finals because we lost in a very similar way anyway. Mm. We, we, we quit and got dominated twice in a row instead of four times in a row. So you still went out the same way. You still yeah. are being called quitters. And at least you didn't get one more further round out of it. So if you're going to be called a quitter, at least go one deeper. Is my, is my <laughs> and also too to to lose at the to get swept at the hands of Jimmy and just have the whole Jimmy Butler. You chose to buy his hairs over me stuff. Just being just being played ad nauseum would be awful too. 
Yeah, yeah. That, that, well, that's least, also one con of that. At least we would have gotten over the Celtics hump, though. Yes, it's true. And then, then it'd be like you can't. Now, then it would have been like you can't beat the Heat. Mm. But we were saying earlier, it also losing to a better team because everyone said the Celtics were better than us. Everyone sa- also said that both the Sixers and Celtics would roll through the Heat because they're just more talented. So. Would you rather lose to a better team or would you rather lose to a team and get swept by a team who you it's are a better, better than? Team. They're, playing, they're playing better than everyone They else. are. No, they, absolutely. Yeah. And, and they were number one seed last year. Yep. So, they're probably, yeah. probably the best coach in the, the playoffs. I ain't getting into all who the best coach. I'm just saying their team is playing well. Yep. You don't want to commit to that one? No, I'm just saying I don't think it really matters. Like who, him being the best coach. Like he's doing a great coaching job, and it's like we we got to be able to say a guy does a great coaching job without him saying he's the best. No, he's just doing a great fair. coaching job. He's that's doing fair. a great coaching job, and the team is playing extremely well. Yeah, that's what it is. That's the fact. Yeah, um, yeah. Because he's also doing up, a great coaching job while the other coach is not calling timeouts and and. and... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, um, you know, I didn't. I thought that they beat the Knicks, but I wouldn't necessarily say Tibbs didn't do a good job. I would just say they the better team won. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're going to get to uh, the hot topic of the offseason, a guy we're going to be talking about a lot uh, over the next uh, uh, probably a month and a half, I would say. Yeah. When's, when's, the, uh, when's the free agency period start? So the week after the draft? First week of uh, July, I think. Is, no, I think it's the beginning of July or right after – either the beginning of July or right after the 4th of July. Yeah, I think it's – I think it's uh, – I think it's the 1st, but I'm going to look it, it up right now. Okay, yeah, that would be like the, uh, about five or six days after the draft. So the week, it's the following week. Yeah. yeah. Usually, I know it's like right after. You can't find the date, Tish? Uh, uh, yeah, July 6th is the one that you can sign. So before then, you can – oh, uh, June 30th, you can start negotiating. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, so a guy we'll be talking about for the, over the next month and a half, I would say. Um, at least. At least, yeah. Depending <laughs> on how, how, depending on how long – Bills will be announced before the 30th. They just can't sign them. Mm. Yeah. Like you'll oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When the, we'll you know. know. By, I think we'll know, know by then what's happening. Yeah, you know when the, you know, the first – you got all the media heads with got to be the first to announce stuff. So their competition okay. will be, be first – We'll tell us mm-hmm. everything. Oh. Just be careful about tampering. You don't want to get your second round pick taken away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, you know, there's no tampering after, after the 30th. No. no tampering after the 30th. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the people coming up saying the guy's going to sign the deal on the 28th. Mm-hmm. You all of a sudden he signs that deal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or you have you have them asking, <laughs> you, you have the Rockets asking all their coaching candidates what they think about coaching James Harden. That's. Yeah, a little borderline. Yeah. Um, okay, so about James Harden. So uh, this week's been a lot of reports. Yeah, going over the last since our last episode, has been multiple different reports on this whole thing. But uh, ESPN's Brian Windhorst reported that there's uh, appears to be an appetite for offering James Harden a four year deal at fifty million dollars per year. Uh, he didn't clarify if this is the Rockets or if there are other teams also interested. He also reported today that the reports of Harden going back to Houston is all just a giant leverage play. He just wants the biggest offer out of the Sixers, even if it isn't the max. Uh, this report counters what Philadelphia Inquirer's Keith Pompey reported a few days ago that Harden to Houston is inevitable. Um, so my question is, what do you guys think about the uh, the two conflicting reports here? Because I know at the beginning of the year we talked about this being a leverage play, but then we heard more and more about Harden to Houston. And then now Windhorse comes back with this counter to Keith Pompey's report about Harden to Houston being inevitable. What do you guys think about leverage versus not leverage at this point? I think it's both. I think it is leverage, but I do think it's real. I think it's more real now than I did um, in the um, preseason or whenever we spoke about it. Um, I I can see him going. I can see him going, and I can see Houston giving him the years that he won or close to the years that he won. I do not see the Sixers giving him more than one or two years. I just don't really? see it happening. I don't see it happening. I don't see them giving him more than that. 
not with guaranteed money. I mean, you may get a Chris Paul deal where that last year is not guaranteed. And I don't know why James. That's why I think James would be like, "Well, I'm gonna just. If I'm only gonna get two years. I'm gonna go live where I want to live, play where I want to play." Um, that's why I think it's interesting. I, I I I do not think this is a settled situation. I think this is gonna go right through free agency, um, right up until free agency, and, and we're gonna have to see where it's at. Um, I do believe if he goes. Um, it's some kind of a sign and trade deal that work, that's worked out. I don't think he just goes and it's just he just goes. Uh, Even though he Houston can sign him out, right? Yes, because it it, it allows Houston to shed it, um, salary and the Sixers to get something in return, even if it's just a um, trade exception and a pick, something. Trade exception that they can use to go get somebody else for this playoff run or whatever. Um, but you just can't let them go for nothing. But you can't, but you also, I don't think you can commit past, I mean, two years is, how old is James? 33, I think. 33. I thought, I thought, I thought it was 34. Cause I thought if you got a four year deal, it'd be a 38 by the time that was done. He's thirty three. Okay. He's going to turn thirty four in the next few months. Okay. Yeah, they're not giving. I don't. I don't see them giving him more than two years. Full guarantee. Um, I think they give him three or more. It's mm-hmm. less than I believe that he'll take. Because you. You'll be sitting up here calling them the new Tobias. <laughs> he will. We'll see what that contract looks like. I'm I, saying, think like I can't believe a guy like you, this own Tobias and his salary, is even entertaining this. Very, um, good, question. very, very good point, Eric. And I, and think- I guarantee you his salary will be more than Tobias's. If he has his way, absolutely, yeah. If he has his way, it'd be 50, 51, 52 a year. So, yeah, a lot more than Tobias's. Um, no, and I brought this up to Marcus the other day. I was like, we can't – I said to myself, we can't sit here complaining about $39 million going into a guy that we don't ask that much of him. But we do we do ask James of a lot, I'd say. Tobias has been asked to catch and shoot and rebound when we ask him to. That's not – as much as it is running an offense. So what I'm saying is like going forward and having Maxi and having to pay him, are you still going to be able to ask James to do that same thing? I would be okay. I'd be okay. James making Tobias's contract. I just don't like the 52 million that that's forget about that. I mean, if he started at Tobias, because I mean Tobias's You're contract three years or four, three years one twenty or four one sixty. I'd be three. I, I'd be fine with three one twenty. I'd be three because that starts like a what like thirty seven. Then the next year's like forty one. The next year's like forty like forty four. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it is a lot, but starting there, it's a little more reasonable for me uh, than it is, especially since Tobias is going to be off the books next year. Um, I all, think it comes- all, 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 I, all I do know from experience and from watching is guys age in that two or three years that you're getting to do. Yeah. So, yeah. James, you've seen this year, um, will we have that next year or even two or two years from now? Three, like, I don't know. Like, I, I'm not saying what I would particularly do. I'm saying I I think it is – I don't think the Sixers having Maxi that they'll have to pay him. Um, we already know he's getting more than $130 million based on what Jordan Poole has. That's that's going to be the going rate. That's, that's probably the starting point based on the 20-point score on the third best record in the league. We already know it. <laughs> and he's a starter. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the starting point. So you're looking at that, 
So now you're saying we're going to have 80 million in our guards? Keep in mind that we don't have to pay Maxie's new numbers don't come into play for two more years. So they would only oh, be overlapping. James. That would be year that'd be year two or three for James, right? Yeah. So James yeah. and Maxie would have like one overlapping year of big money together. And then at 80 so, million. Yeah, for that one year. Yeah. It's a lot. It is a lot. Well, no, it'd be seventy million, though, right? Because if James signs that hypothetical three for one twenty, be forty a year, and then well, you're, assume, you're, you're assuming that Maxi gets one thirty. Yeah, we're also assuming he gets pool money and not Mikael Bridges' money, right? Mikael Bridges well, is on, under contract for like twenty four million, and he's like one of the best wings in the league now. So, you know, I, because I, he was I think, But I don't think you can assume that he didn't get. Pool money. I mean, that would be Ooh. the high end, I think. Max. He's the second lead scorer on the third best team in the league. Yeah. And I mean, Bridges was what? The third leading scorer on the. Like, what? He was the fourth lead scorer. <laughs> he, he, I think he was averaging more than Chris Paul. Who was he averaging less than at the time? DeAndre Aiden and Booker. I don't know right? if he was averaging. I mean, like, but Aiden, he, that high though. Like, he was, you got to look, I'm talking about his career. I'm not talking about a year. You got to talk about, they They not signed him for the year. They signed him for the career and his growth. But what he did with, new, with Brooklyn, it's not what he was doing. That's, he was the fourth or fifth option there. No, but he was still at the time, I think, the third leading scorer. I think he averaged more than Chris Paul was. Chris Paul was averaging like 12 points a game. But he wasn't a volume guy. He wasn't getting the touches that Chris was getting. I agree with you. I I just so, think so that that's he, what I'm you can say point score, but but Chris was making plays and getting assists and doing more. So he he accounted for more points than he did. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, if we're bringing it down, I thought you were saying third thing to score flat out. Yeah, he. Yeah, I'm just saying. Well, like good, he, well hold on. I could do that with Harden and and Maxi too. If we're going to count assists, if we count assists, then Harden up. Attributes more points to our offense than Maxi does. Yeah, this then past he, year he did. So he's third then. This past year, so I'm saying going forward. You this you talking about a guy that was a second leading score mm -hmm. on the team that had the third best record in the league. He he's going to get more than Jordan Poole. That's 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 mm. that's not a crazy like if you if you're his agent what like. If you're his agent, Jordan Poole's contract is his is the starting point. And he got Rich Paul, right? There's no yep. way he's getting less. <laughs> There's no way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's a little wishful thinking from Tej over here. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> but that's all I'm saying. I mean, like, guy, I mean, guys do yeah, sign for I'm less, though. I mean, like, why did Bridges true. only get that? Huh? I mean, it's not a yeah, four-round. Bridges, well, Bridges – when did Bridges sign his deal, Tasha? That's what I'm saying. Because mm. I think if he signed that deal before with, this past this, season, well, yes, yeah, before the trade. So I, I think if he signed that deal with Brooklyn. I think he'd be asked for top, top, top money. Yeah, he, was, he, was, dude, he was averaging 17 points a game with Phoenix. What well, you guys are acting like that's like he averaged like eight points a game or something? Yes, but Cam Johnson and all these guys weren't playing. And then they didn't even they didn't even have what you remember what you call it was wasn't there this year. Forgot his name. They went to Crowder. Milwaukee. Crowder. Yes, it was a totally I mean, different team. He signed it in the off season. This last—that's what I'm saying. He signed before this season. There's no way he would have got that kind of um, deal going into the last season. Mm -hmm. He's a, he, his numbers has grown up, but that oh. deal was already done. Well, yeah, he averaged 14 points a game last Thank year. Thank you. Max he averaged 22. <laughs> okay. Twenty. I mean, Bridges on under difference, man. Yeah, I know he's under contract for twenty-one million this year. I, I think I, I know. I understand that, but what I'm saying fifty percent is. I know, but, you, but you're looking at a guy that was the fourth or fifth option on a team versus a guy that's the second option. I'd still say he wasn't the fifth option on Phoenix. I think you're you're selling him a little short there. Fourth option. 
Who's the because, third option? Because when you – offensively, he was the fifth option because they went to Chris, they went to um, Booker, they went to Aiton, and then I seen Cam Payne and Cam Johnson and all those guys get offensive touches and calls. They, 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 they got, got touches. All of those guys. They, they got touches. Amazing. I don't think they were higher. I don't think they were higher option. If you ask a they didn't, what Phoenix a GM was, or coach, they would not guy, say a pain. guy score more points and a guy being a volume option are can be two different things. Sometimes you score more points because you play more minutes. Mm-hmm. But when the guy come in and they run pick and roll, they run action for a guy. That's how you know they didn't run actions for him. He when averaged. Guys injured, they did. So you averaged the fourth most shot attempts that season. That's a fair. That's a fair assessment, right? Shot attempts. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Very close to Chris so, Paul, though. So, so point four, eight less. Then look at the minutes, though. That's what I'm saying. So he fourth most with more minutes. So you got guys that are close. That the minutes aren't even close. But that should bow well for his contract when he plays the most minutes no, in the no, team. No, I'm not saying I'm not knocking Bridges at all. I'm just saying. He has the fourth most, but he's playing way more minutes than some of those guys. It's probably really you're saying. criticizing Bridges is Bridges' agent. <laughs> no, no, I'm just no, not no, getting him more I'm money. Saying timing matters. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If he signed that deal this year, we're we're having a totally different contract. Oh, I mean he'd be yeah, he'd be so that's what I'm saying. So last year when he signed that deal, it was because of how he was viewed then. Mm-hmm. Just that's what I'm saying about Maxi. How Maxi signed that deal now versus last year, it's two different contracts. Yeah. But Jordan Poole pretty much signed his contract at his peak so far. Well, he signed it because Clay was out and he was starting and he was balling. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I get that, but I'm saying yeah. he signed that literally at probably the best time he could but, sign that but contract. I also don't think it's a bad contract for him. Uh, for Poole? I don't know. We'll disagree on that one. How's it a bad coach? He was playing. He didn't have a good playoff series. He was playing. The played. That's he didn't him. have a good playoff series. But if you're telling me that the talent isn't there and he hasn't shown the talent, I don't think that's that's an accurate statement. He no. showed it. That's why he got it. Yes, he didn't play well then, but also he also wasn't playing ten minutes in the game. Mm-hmm. But we know a play a bad playoff series series can. Make or break you, right? I mean, we lost our coach because of a bad playoff series. Yeah, I understand that. But to say a guy can't play because he had a bad playoff series. No, oh, I didn't say he couldn't play. Look, you. If, so he goes back and he he comes back this year and he plays the way he played before. He has a friendly contract based on what we're talking about. Based on where he was headed. Yes, sure. that's what I'm saying. That's a friendly contract. He doesn't For have what, a contract. He doesn't have a max contract. Like he he has a really he makes good money, but you look around the league. If you look around the league, right, and you look at the two 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 guard position, it's tons of guys that's going to make more money than them that play his position. Tons of guys. Maxie's going to get more. Bain's going to get more. Edwards is going to get more. It's tons of guys at his position. He's like ninth in his position with all those guys behind him. Yeah, twenty eight, thirty, and thirty three. For where he's going, for where he's going, and where yeah. and those guys are going to pass him, so he but, won't even be, he won't even be top ten in salary. That's him getting better though. If he stays just, at where he is right I, now, then it's saying, but you, why you can't assume that he's not going to get better? We're assuming everybody else is going to get better because he had a horrible. Because last time we saw because him, he had one bad series. Okay, so Joel's not going to get better. Is Maxi not going to get better? They weren't that great. <laughs> I'm, just I'm not saying, saying they're not going to get. I'm not. Well, they're. I mean, you know. I'm just saying well, we just can't well, say he's not going to get better, and we assume everybody else will. I don't they say we assume play. that at all. I don't okay. assume that. And Bain didn't play particularly great when they lost in the playoffs. Yeah. No, but what's his not great? Averaging like 15 and great, de- in pretty good defense. I, I understand that, but his not great. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He didn't play great in the playoffs, like other people. Like Clay Thompson wasn't great against the Lakers. Clay just has the history. He, he has a legacy that's already seeming it, but he uh-huh. wasn't great. But Clay played 30, 40 minutes. Don't tell me a guy didn't play well when he plays 10 minutes. But that's because Clay can also contribute defensively. If Poole can't hit shots, he's about as useless as Niang is for us. Well, I mean, you can say that about Steph Curry, and we know that's not true. But you that's true, that. but his 
but his but Steph Curry's bad is like twenty five. I didn't say it was true. I said you could say that about him. Mm. I don't believe it, but you can say that. Yeah, but different people's level of bad is is different, right? Poole's bad is seven points on three of ten shooting. Curry's bad is like twenty five points, and but like thirty seven percent shooting. Yeah, I'm, you know I'm, what I mean? Exactly. But Curry also played 30, 40 minutes. Yes. Don't give me. I'm just saying. Don't say a guy played ten minutes and tell me how horrible he is. What do you expect Maxi to sign for, Tej? I mean, I, I'm curious what, what what you think what, what you think would be fair based on pool and and market value. I, guess. I think Pool's contract's fine. I'd be happy with Pool's contract, and I think his contract's a starting point. Yeah, that that's the. I'm not saying he's going to sign for twenty million. I'm just and saying there are what other. I'm is this, and it's not a comparison for him to pull. I'm just saying if you're coming in, what free agency is all about is all about establishing what you think you're worth. And you go to the market to help establish that. Uh-huh. RJ Barrett's contract, 23, 25, 27, the next three the years. The market helps you establish that, yes. But I know that. But also the league is making more money. The salaries go up every year. Yeah, but if I'm the Sixers, I could be like, John Morant's making 33 next year. You're not John Morant, kid. Let's slow down, right? So, like, you can look at a pool at 30, but I can also say there's also a What if John player. Morant wouldn't have got in trouble? How much was he going to make? <laughs> Here he's, I mean, he's, I think he signed that deal last year, though. No, but his deal went up based on what he established. If he would have been all NBA, his deal would have went oh, up. Oh, based on his all NBA. Yes. Okay, well, yeah, um, that, that, and true. he was headed for that, right? But they were, but they paid him based on what he was showing. They, already, they paid right? him as max, his max. He's a max guy. His thing would have went up, but he didn't do what he didn't make the all NBA and all that. So now all of a sudden, he lost thirty or forty million dollars. Yeah, not lost, yeah. but he doesn't get it. But based on as is who Moran is at 33 million, Maxi's worth blank. 30, 34, 35? I just don't see how. the most he can get. That's what he's worth. But we're, but we're comparing, you, you start comparing to other players and stuff. So I'm saying, John ja, ja makes 33. I'm, I'm, yes, that's what I'm saying. But you, you're saying John ja Moran's worth more. He just can't get more. That's the issue. The issue isn't what Maxi's. Is comparing him to John Morant. John Morant is only getting that because that's the most he could get. If he was able to get more, he would have gotten more. Mm-hmm. That's the issue. So the issue is him being capped. Yeah, I mean. So just because John Morant is capped, you can't come cap me because he's capped. That has nothing to do with me. It's true, but you got to look at the guys who are getting that money, though. Donovan Mitchell is getting 33. Jason Tatum's getting 32. De'Aaron Fox is getting 32. They all didn't sign their deals before they reached their potential. They're just not – I mean, how can – I just could, – I couldn't justify thinking it's a starting point for him to get 32 when Tatum, De'Aaron Fox, and Donovan Mitchell recently signed, like, those deals. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, I just – that, that's what I – they, they signed right to this year. Yeah, but Max isn't performing like those guys. All I'm saying is – if they sign, you can judge them on what they got in the past. If those guys was to sign, right, if they were free agent coming up or their contract was coming up in two years, like his, how much would they get? Not they how much they got. How much but, Donovan they Mitchell, get? but Donovan Mitchell had like three straight 25-point seasons going into that contract. That, but I'm saying, how much would he get if they were free agents at the same time? Donovan, so, same thing. What's changed in a year for Donovan Mitchell? And so in two years, you think he wouldn't get more? No, no, but you're saying right now, though, Donovan Mitchell signed that contract last year. So it's like, that's, what's that's changed? So, so I'm saying if he's a free agent at the same time as Maxi, do you think he signs what he signed for last year? Mitchell? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, what, what's, now, what's, how, how do you think in two years he signed with the same amount two years ago? He's going to – everything goes up. The salary well, goes up every year. Okay, like what? Two more million? I mean, I, I'm. I mean, you. If a guy's. My look, point is, there's a case to be made for Mitchell to make more me, than Max. Let me ask you this question. He's right established. Here. Let, let me ask veteran. you this question right here. Do you think James will sign for the same contract that he signed? He played for this past year. No, that was a favor. Then, then, then that's my point. So that was like a no in favor. Mitchell that's that's the same thing he signed for two years ago. No, 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 no. Because Mitchell <laughs> wasn't a favor to Cleveland. Mitchell signed the best deal he could. That's different. James took less money. It was publicized that he did. That's my point. The money goes up. That's all I'm saying is the money goes up every year. 
Well, yeah, no, it does. Mitchell, Mitchell made 30 this year. He's making 33 next year. Yes, and if Mitchell was a free agent, if Mitchell signed a one-year deal, the money would go up. If he signed another one-year deal, the money would go up. I don't think it'd be that much more than what he's getting, though, right now. It, it would be whatever his max is. That's what I'm trying to say. And the max go up every year. So if they sign a deal, that's why got that's why teams don't want guys to sign one year deals because they got the risk of them leaving and risk of paying more. Mm-hmm. That's why they don't want that. They that's why they want to lock them in these three or four year deals. That's why all, we play, it was six and seven year deals. All I was that's doing was countering the if Pool makes this, then Maxi should make this because I can say, well, if I'm saying SG, Pool's contract, if SGA and Jamal Murray make thirty three, then Maxi should be making thirty. Pool's contract is is like I said. It was going to be a starting point for Max. I'm not saying anything about whether it's fair or not. I'm telling you how negotiations go. And if he doesn't get that, he's not going to sign it. That's all I'm saying. That's how it's going to start because then he's going to look and he's going to say, Edwards is going to get more than that. Edwards is going to get the max. That's going to set the, that's going to set the table. Edwards at this point is a better player. He should get more. That's going to set the table. I'm not comparing them as a player. I'm going to say the contracts are five set. He's going to look and say, well, he got 33, 35. Okay, we know where to start me. All I'm saying is the market establishes it, not the player. The market establishes it. And you're well, saying, then- well, what Mitchell makes, and they're saying is that's not my issue. You know just like I know Mitchell's worth more than that. But he just signed a deal three years, two years ago, a year ago. But you know he's more more than that. But pay me what I'm worth. If I if I performed and I'm able to make it, pay me. That's why I'm saying Poole's contract is that's where it's gonna start. Poole signed that a year ago. That you can't tell me that another year from now, Max is gonna sign that same deal. No way. No, well, no hmm. way you would do that. I try try to lock him up a new extension now. I know the team will want him to do that, but I'm saying, especially with Rich being his agent, there's no way he takes that kind of deal. Assuming he's performing the same way he's performed this year. That's all yeah. assumption. Well, there's no, no way he does. I'm sure they would still ask for that money to try to get it. It doesn't mean they'll there's get it. There's no though. way he signs that deal. So, so that was the max money he could get, Mitchell could, from the Cavs. I don't know. I don't think he signed with the Cavs or Utah. No, he, he – it wasn't a trade, was it? Was it a trade? No, he it signed there. That was a trade. It was a trade. Yeah, so he signed, so he signed that deal in Utah and got traded. Yeah, so he just signed that deal. He's probably been signed a year or two. He signed it. The, year, the deal might have just came into fact, but he signed that deal before mm-hmm. with Utah. Oh yeah, that was the Sexton, big Sexton deal. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like those guys are their 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 money is just coming up, but they're signing those deals that two years ago was a great deal. Yeah. I mean, look at Jalen Brunson's deal. If I, if I want Max to get less money, I'd be like, look at Brunson's deal. Look at Brunson's deal. Brunson also didn't have bird rights. Yeah. He went as a free agent. And he was a second-round pick. So he had to play those years to get that. He didn't have a salary. That, so they had to use salary cap space on him. Mm-hmm. Everybody did. Because he wasn't a high-salary guy and he wasn't a first round pick where you playing on bird rights. So you had to sign those consecutive four years deal just to get his bird rights. But then he didn't have a high salary. So you still got to use salary cap space or only you can only sign him for so much. You can sign him for more than the Knicks, but you couldn't really sign him on that high salary without using the cap space and using your receptions. Mm-hmm. So the Knicks signed him as a free agent. That's why he got the deal he got. It was a great deal. If he had bird right with the Knicks, he would have got more. Mm. Yeah. Eric does Tage do a good job representing what a GM does during co- contract talks with, yeah. with Larry, his arm. Larry, Larry Bird. You know it's called. You know why it's called Bird rights, right? No. What, what is the backstory behind because that? They put it in for Boston wanted to be able to keep Larry Bird when he was a free agent. That's why it's called the, the Bird rights. Oh. Oh wow. 
to be able to sign more than any other team to keep you a free agent. Hmm. Interesting. The Derrick Rose rule, you know, is if a guy, a younger guy, um, gets like NBA, like the like, 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 like you guys, someone like all NBA or MVP, you're able to sign for a higher max if you accomplish certain things because Derrick Rose got an MVP at such a young age. Mm-hmm. His max was still younger, still less than everybody else's. Oh, wow. In the Gilbert Arenas rule, I think it's something like if you're a second round pick or undrafted guy, you're able to sign for more money. Or like, like Austin Reeves is going to have to use the Gilbert Arenas exception for the Lakers to be able to sign and retain him and, and pay him. Oh, wow. Because the way it was set up before, like he would just be a free agent and they didn't have bird rights because he's only been mm-hmm. there two years. So they would have to sign. They would have to have cap space. Um, if somebody else had cap space, they would have to have cap space to be able to sign him and match a deal. But now with that exception, they can give him middle, um, the middle of an exception and then extend him and then use space behind that to pay him more. But they would have to pay him a little. If you look at what the Lakers are able to do to match a deal, it's like they would have to, his salary would jump like nine to twelve million to like twenty seven million or something like that in the third year or something like that. Well, with the way he's playing, I mean, no, 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 I'm not. I'm just saying, like, but you got to look at like you don't in that third year you don't really know. <laughs> it's not like you get in, in that first year. It's like it's that big jump. That's the yeah. issue. You know what I'm saying? You went from 9 to 12, then all of a sudden 27 to 30. Um, so, we'll see. You guys can talk contracts all day. <laughs> you too. <laughs> oh, man, we have, to, we have a spinoff show just talking about contracts. Just, in the just, to, just to conclude the James Harden stuff, I think it comes down to years. I think, I yes. think we'll be pushing okay. for – So, do, do you think – I want to ask this before you get off this topic. Do you think James would prefer less money, more years, or less years, more money? Years. You think he'd want more money? I think if we give James three years, he'll be willing to take less money. I didn't say, you know, I think he's still going to want his money because yes, yes. and you, you can only make it when you can make it. Um, I, I, just, I believe that the years will be the hold up. Yeah. But you think it's a two. See, most people think it's a three to four year hold up. You think it's a two to three year hold up. I said from the Sixers perspective. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I don't know why the Sixers would do more than two years. But I also don't think James will take two years from the Sixers. So that's where I think is the conflict. Um, yeah. Personally, as a fan, I, I, I'd be okay with the three year if it's discounted. No, that's what I'm saying. Like James take two years at the max. I don't think he would take it. I think he would take three years and or four years and, and less. And so you you think he'd take three for one twenty over two for a hundred? Yeah, especially if he can choose where he wants to go. Yes. Yeah. Which, I mean, three years for 120. That is an extra 20. I mean, you know. Yes. You do a lot with that. <laughs> but he, I mean, it would be, as far as salary cap ramifications, it would only be about, because that deal will probably start like, what, 37, 38, and then go up. Two more than what he was going to be scheduled for this year anyway, and that was a discount. So it's not that bad we'll in terms that. of financial. Oh, this, this, this is a huge issue. We'll see. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see how correct some of these rumors are about this whole situation. We're going to find out. Yep. Um, okay, so uh, going back to uh, kind of talking about the playoffs um, and stuff. Uh, so yesterday, uh, after the Nuggets swept the Lakers, um, it was kind of nice to see uh, Nikola Jokic kind of go to bat for MB, the guy who's been taking a lot of shit uh, in social media, media over the last, since our Game 7 loss. Um, he went on uh, his press conference, he said, People are just mean in saying that Embiid shouldn't have won it. I think he should have won it. I think he was playing, if you watch it, extremely tough basketball through the whole season. He was really amazing. So it's nice to see Jokic uh, speak up for Embiid and, you know, you know, give him a pat on the back there with everyone, especially 
the talking head, Stephen A. Smith, everyone kind of shitting on Embiid. Uh, it was nice to see Jokic uh, have each other's back. And they, they both of it really had each other's back this whole year, always complimenting each other. Uh, but the, the big thing on social media has been um, with Jokic going to the finals now. Um, it's kind of cementing that Jokic is the uh, premier five in the league. He's the premier big man in the league. So I wanted to ask you guys, do you guys agree that this kind of closes the book on the conversation between Embiid and Jokic now that Jokic has made that step to the finals? When it matters. If they hit a loss in the second round, we wouldn't be having this conversation. So the, the biggest difference is winning. Yep. So – Let's just make sure we never forget, you know, let's just not dismiss how important winning and helping your team win and being that catalyst to winning, how important that is. Um, that's, that's, to me, that's, that's the difference. Um, numbers, yeah, the talent, I mean, it's how you, it's, that's how you're used. Um, Joel's never going to be a high assist guy um, because of the way he's used. He's not used, and it's not his style, just like I don't think. Joker will average 33 points. You know what I'm saying? But I think that they're both very effective in what they do. Um, both very good players. Um, one team in the finals. So, blame whatever you want to blame, but um, winning matters. Yeah, I, I think you have a uh, – <laughs> I mean, so many different parts of this debate, like one-on-one, -on -one, head up against each other, who would – who? who has a bigger impact in the game. But when it comes down to it right now, like right today, it's, I mean, it's Joker because he comes up biggest when it matters most. And right now, MB comes up really, really small when it matters most. So it's not like a, oh, Joel had a great series, a great playoffs, but we still lost. He couldn't get us over the hump. Like, like people were saying about LeBron right now, like, oh, he was great. Yeah but he couldn't get them over the hump. He couldn't will his team to victory. It wasn't even like that for Joel, dude. He, he had a bad playoffs. He had a bad playoff series. So it's a step even lower than that. It wasn't that he couldn't get over it. He couldn't even get to like the, his season average. Couldn't even get close to his regular season average. Um, I, yeah. I, it's funny. We, we a lot, James gets a lot of criticism for this playoffs, right? I think both do. I just think James gets a lot more because a lot of people think he's on the way out. It's easier to criticize the guy who's going to be off your team soon. Um, but James had two epic performances in that series. Like some of his best playoff performances ever in this playoffs. He had some of his worst ones too, but at least he had two epic ones. And B didn't have anything, really. Only, only won two games with Joe. Yeah. I mean, so we it's hard. I mean, yeah, you got his MVP trophy. That's great. I will say this, though. Denver has a really, really good team. If we go back, we talked about this last year. I loved the KCP deal for them. That was so big. I think that was one of the best deals this offseason. That was so big for them. It, 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 it gave them a, another wing defender who could just nail threes. Um, they have a really well. It was a lottery pick, so he can play, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Barton, I mean, dude, Barton, Barton wasn't getting minutes on the on the Wizards for most of this year. On the Wizards, he was hard to get minutes on that team. So they got a guy who he, he, he fit. He's a guy that can defend multiple positions. He can make threes, and he's not a volume guy. He doesn't need to hold the ball. Yeah, exactly. that's really that's really the difference between him and Barton. Barton was an ISO guy. One yes. to go one on one, and and it wasn't a better fit with with your and Murray. This is so, so it's just a fit. It's not necessarily a knock on Barton. It's just a better fit, um, and it's a great fit for them. And they had a Wizards team that was looking to go in a different direction, and just a great fit, great move um, by Denver. Yeah, they just have they have a really well constructed team. Something we can almost learn but from Bruce, that way. But Brown was too. <laughs> Brown was great. I couldn't believe they got him. I wanted him. He's a free agent. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I wanted him. I was, I was like, dude, they got him for that? It's like, dude, Denver looks incredible. Um, but that's the thing. Every year, Denver is not like one of those 
Oh, where do they come from? Every year, people have been saying, oh, Denver's my dark horse to win it all if they just stay healthy. Well, what happened this year? They stayed healthy. All their key guys, because they're a pretty top-heavy team. If you take out, let's say yeah, Porter has one of the seven, maybe eight guys. I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So if Porter missed, let's say Porter got injured, they'd be, they would be they would have been in trouble in the Lakers series. It would have hurt big time. Yes. It's they, just they the first year that it. none of their guys got hurt. They might, have, might not have made it that far. Yeah, or if Murray did his classic. I mean, I know they had. But, you know, you can say that about us, too, if Tobias or. Totally, yes. He would have went out. I mean, well, we did have an injury. We had MB oh, getting injured. Our, our Jokic got injured. You guys are missing. Like, yeah, God, that has happened. Um, but at the end of the day, our guys play. Yes. Um, they stayed healthy. They killed it. They have a very, very well-balanced team. Um, a lot of guys on good deals. Uh, Porter's got a good deal. Uh, Murray's got a pretty good deal for it. They have a really elite score in Murray and a bunch of guys that do a few things really, really well. Um, they don't have a lot of one-dimensional yeah, I mean, players. Those guys are on good deals because they were they've been injured. It's serious. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You, know, you got them on those oh, deals man. because of that. Yeah. Does that mean you want to trade for Lonzo Ball? No, I'm just saying. I'm, like, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Like, I'm kidding. Those guys having injuries kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Kept their values from going through the roof. Um. But yeah, I just great team, and uh, that's not to take away from Joker, but they have a great team. I'm not. Uh, he's not. He's I mean, not a one man yeah, show. Yeah, I mean, and the Aaron Gordon move a year ago was also a great move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He fit that team. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that was another move that um, – because Gary Harris and those guys were playing well for them. Yeah. When they made that move. Another injured player gets – guy gets injured a lot, Gary so, Harris. But, you know, but he brings the the size. Mm-hmm. Uh, being able to guard those – these nice, you know, wings with size, like a LeBron. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Like a Tatum or Jimmy, you know what I'm saying? Like he's gonna have to spend time on these guys. Yeah, if you have a talented team and you're healthy, you should do well, right? If your players show up for you, yeah, you got a chance. So. Yeah. Which uh, kind of talk about the health aspect with NB kind of rolls us into our last question. Ooh. But before we uh, get out of here, um, so NB checked off the MVP this season. He got that, you know, off his bucket list. Um, with the new coach coming in, bucket list. Come on, Marcus. That's that's clever. What? A bucket list. Basket bucket. Oh yeah, I wasn't even thinking. I wasn't even thinking. Come about on, that. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> um, but with the new coach coming in, um, how would you, Eric? How would you uh, kind of look when interviewing these these candidates? How would you want these these coaches to kind of approach uh, MB's minutes and kind of um, it kind of kind of limiting his minutes throughout the regular season in order for us to get the best, most healthy MB when it comes to playoff time. How would you kind of talk to coaches about how we approach him? Yeah, I mean, this I, wouldn't, season? I wouldn't necessarily put that solely on the coach. I mean, I think you would have to go with medical staff. Um, you would have to speak it's with evil. Joel um, and, and definitely come up with a plan. Um, so I would, I mean, I, I think coach just has to be open to that more so than having the plans. I don't think a coach can actually, you know, make that plan himself without taking an account of all the other different people that, that should be involved in that decision. But speaking to a coach and saying, hey, are you open to your best player being limited minutes? You know, some may, people may be like, man, I'm not coming in here to, you know, not be able to have my best guy on the court all the time. So I just think it has to be something that's a conversation has to be had about it. Would you prefer more games and limited minutes in those games, or would you prefer full allotment of minutes but less games? Well, we know he's going to play 65. Yeah. So. Um, or, or does he? I'm just saying, most of those guys are going to try to go 65 because that's how they get all their bonuses. Yeah. They make all the, you know, all NBA and all that stuff. So you, you'll see majority of the guys, if if they can enable, they will play 65. Um, so I'm kind of expecting that 
to happen. Um, so they play 65. I, I, I think I think you probably set a season limit of trying to get him to 70 plus games, 70 games. And I think you if you can get him to 70 games, then you probably cap them at certain moments. That'd be a career high for him, by the way. That's why I said it. it's a goal, and then you cap them in a certain amount of minutes. Um, I think if you, I remember, I think back to like John Stockton, play against John Stockton, kind of watch his career. He he went out the game at the same time every game, no matter how the game was going in the first half. He went out and came back in the same time every single time. I can see something like that in the first half. So I think the, the minutes has to be managed better in the first half. Um, Especially the regular season, he goes out, he, he plays eight minutes, he goes out, he'll come back into eight minute mark and his minutes are capped. You play 16 minutes and, and whatever it is, you play 16. So now you're looking at, you got to play 20 just to get 30 the next half. So I, I just believe that it got to be more of a plan, especially in first halves where you capping capping those minutes. So when going over this question, I was looking at Kawhi's game log in his last few years of his career. Um, so since 2018, Kawhi's averaged 55 games played per season. This would be against what you said because you get the 65 game, which is a great point. Um there's no reason why he can play 65 and have very heavily minute restrictions for those 10 games. Um, I know it's crazy to say that, but would you rather – I would rather a healthy MB to be the sixth seed than a banged-up MB to be the number two seed. Because as, as the Heat have shown us, seeding – doesn't maybe matter as much as we think it does. We, we took two from Boston at Boston. How many games did Boston win at Philly? Two, two three, two. three. Two. So what's, you know, home court, home schmort. I, I mean, like, well, I'd rather have, I'd rather go on the road for four games in a playoff series and have Embiid than have home court and not have him or have him at like 70%, which is a, becoming our playoff norm every year. And I, I'm, I'm tired of it. Um, so I, yeah, I'd rather be as cautious as hell with him. I mean, we can't have him banged up, but what's the point of having, I mean, how many years does he need an MVP and to have an underwhelming playoff experience and performance? I just think this. No. Joker play the way he's playing and leading. Hopefully that'll yeah, be the next I mean, step for to be like, I mean, all right, you know, that's at the end of the day, we have to, at the end of the day, we have to acknowledge the fact that um Jokic has historically been healthier than Joel. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jokic is a tank. So that matters. Yeah. yeah he's playing 40 minutes. But one thing we can do is 40 minutes and we can prepare these last couple of games. He's playing 40 minutes. I know. I know. But we can prepare and adjust for that. I, I think that's something they need to look into because just hoping and, you know, wishing upon shooting stars that Embiid's healthy in the playoffs. It has to be a plan. Yeah. They can't just wheel it and, and roll dice every year. There has to be some, some kind of thing going on. Some form of a plan. We'll see. Like, I don't know. We gotta, we gotta be a plan. And that won't even guarantee because some of these – a lot of these injuries for Embiid have been freak accidents and that you're not going to avoid that. You're not – Limiting him to 40 games wouldn't have stopped Siakam from elbowing him in the face two years ago or last year. That just would have happened regardless. That's nothing to do with wear and tear, right? But you do what you can. You do what you can to try to plan accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully he works that following coach more so this offseason to maybe <laughs> mitigate some some lower light, lower body injuries. You all said it. I didn't say it. <laughs> oh man. I, I had it for the falling coach in there. I, yeah, it, it was per, it was perfect timing for it. <laughs> Great, it's, yeah, I love it. Uh, all right, fellas. Well, that does it for us. Uh, we're going to be getting after more more off season scenarios uh, with our next week's episode. So we hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll see you guys next week. All right, take it easy.